the story of the film really is about an old, I say Chinaman. <laughs> uh, we weren't allowed to, as I say, allowed to use that title, but yes, he was actually from a Chinaman who was in Vietnam during the war. Um, and he's an old man at this point. I think he's in his 60s. He runs a, you know, a hole in the wall Chinese restaurant. His, uh, he picks up his daughter from school. He takes her to this boutique. She's hoping to go out to a party. Um, and the place blows up. The whole boutique, the whole area around the boutique blows up. She dies. And he, um, he, he obviously is uh, distraught completely and utterly emotionally wrecked because of this and very quietly goes to the police to ask as to who did this there's obviously an Irish connection he gets no joy from them he realizes things aren't going to move forward it's going to take a long time so in his own quiet dignified way he sets about um, trying to find out who actually committed the atrocity which takes him to Ireland where he meets the Deputy First Minister, who is um, Pierce Brosnan in the story. And really, it becomes a battle of wits between those two. Well, it was just to have a, <coughs> a fairly gritty uh, kind of feel to the movie, obviously, um, because it's set in, uh, as it happened, we shot in winter in London, which was uh, difficult because we lost our light very early on. And I think when we started it was three o'clock in the afternoon, no light, it was dark. So one or two of the scenes will be at night when perhaps they could have been in daylight, basically. Um, but that was the look of the film. David Tattersall did a terrific job. We had to move very fast because of our schedule. Um, and uh, we just wanted this kind of gritty, um, feel to the movie because it's a thriller and uh, it's got a revenge plot obviously um, and so we shoot a lot in Ireland uh, so that was the feel of it really. Well it, really it's just that quiet persistence you know a man who really has nothing to lose right I think he's even prepared to die or he's got no family left. Uh, we also learn about an earlier tragedy with his family. And really, he has nothing left except to track down and uh, essentially get justice. And he has this, Jackie has this wonderful kind of centered, almost gracious um, sensibility. You know, he's, he, he, he's very uh, dignified. There's a he, he's a good man, basically. I, I think it says it in the, on the poster, you know, uh, uh, about a good man. And uh, that's what he is. Well, he's, you know, he's a, a quiet man li living a quiet life. He runs this Chinese restaurant, which is in the east end of London, of which there are hundreds of, of Chinese restaurants if you've been to London. Uh, he has this woman who runs, helps, um, who, who helps, really runs the day-to-day -day operations, but he's there. And very quietly, he makes a, um, he has a simple life. He makes a living from the restaurant, nothing too much. He even, at one point, offers the um, police chief 20,000 pounds in order to at least get a clue, a name to help out. And his naivety, he hands over 20,000 pounds, which is all his life savings, in order to get some information uh, uh, about who could possibly have done this atrocity, which killed his daughter. Well, well, I think that's one of the aspects of the movie which is so interesting, is that normally in a thriller like this, say you take um, Taken, for example, it, it's very simple. You know, his daughter is kidnapped. He then goes and shoots 350 people in order to um, get his daughter back. And, and terrific it was. But uh, there's a whole kind of political aspect to this, which has to do with the IRA, um, 
the fact that Hennessy, that's Pierce Brosnan, was at one time connected with it, that Hennessy was part of the peace process, that within his own camp he has, um, he has friends, acquaintances, and even enemies, right, who uh, it turns out, of course, um, uh, are the, the people he thought were his friends are indeed perhaps his enemies. So there is a whole, if you will, subplot that goes on, which has to do with that IRA story. Because he's got nothing to lose. And he also, he owes it to his family. He feels that um, he lost two daughters earlier on. Uh, just after the war, after the Vietnam War, in a horrible way, he lost his daughters. And he felt he should have protected them, he should have saved them. Um, it was way beyond his, you know, he had no control of, or of the circumstances under which they were, under which they were um, taken. But he feels the guilt of that. And when his third daughter, right, dies, he has nothing left to lose. He has to, he feels not only is he, um, it, 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 does he have to uh, do it for the daughter that's just died, but also for his past as well. And he has nothing to lose and nothing is going to stop him. I don't think for a second he expects to live through this, and he doesn't care. It's just the justice is something, you know, is morally what he has to do. and. That's what he's going to do. If it costs him his life, so be it. Well, Jackie is Quan. I mean, you know, we're all used to Jackie's, well, the thing he does better than anybody else in the world, which is his kind of comedy, his physical comedy. Um, we've all seen the movies, and they're all great. Um, uh, and I, I, I must say that. Um, I don't think any of us, uh, I don't think Kathy or the other producers, none of us were absolutely sure that he could play a straight, serious, emotional role, an emotional dad, an aging, uh, you know, a guy at 65 who was, uh, loses a daughter. I mean, there's a lot of emotional weight with that, a lot of emotional baggage to carry. And uh, I'd seen... Um, a uh, karate kid where he's, he's rather marvelous in that, playing a very straight role. And I remembered the scene where he smashes up the car, which I thought was an absolutely unique scene. Um, and I realized then that absolutely he can, he can do this. And uh, I must say to his credit, he threw himself into it when he came and uh, um, he worked very hard at it. But I think when you see the film, you'll be very surprised. You know, he, he's, he's excellent. Well, first of all, Pierce is Irish. I mean, that's number one, which helps. Not Northern Irish, because the accent he has is a Northern Irish accent. If you listen to Jerry Adams, that's what you get. It's pretty much look-alike anyway with uh, Jerry Adams. But Pierce, I think, is, is one of the best things he's ever done. He threw himself into that role. I remember him saying to me, he was a little worried about the IRA because being Irish and doing a story like this. However, he, he, he went into it sort of with his eyes open. And, uh, and for once, I got some rehearsal time with him before we started, so that helped. And uh, he just found that character. And I, I think it's, um, I think the character, you know, he finally came up with is absolutely fascinating. Everybody liked the movie, which is unusual. But so, you know, the older people, I think uh, it, was, um, <clears throat> it was interesting that everybody should. And I, and I think that's because of Jackie. I think he just brings a gravitas and a kind of an emotional spine to the story that would, you know, another actor perhaps uh, wouldn't. But I think he's also a, you know, he's an icon and people love to watch him. And uh, I think because he's doing something different and he's so convincing in the film, I, I think everybody sort of um, uh, uh, 
absolutely connect with this character.